All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another Transformers review. So this time we're taking a look at the Siege Voyager Megatron, and I specifically wanted to do this as a comparison to the Titan Re Titans Return Voyager Megatron because... I initially missed out on this guy when he was new, and I was hoping that he would be a suitable replacement for the Titans Return one on my shelf, because I love the Siege Voyager Optimus Prime. It's the best-looking G1-style Optimus Prime that I own, and so I was hoping this Megatron would live up to that. Totally missed out on him when he was new. And then someone traded in a set of both the Optimus Prime and the Megatron together in this special 35th anniversary packaging which I guess would have been 2019 when that came out then. And this one specifically has the color deco that is made to look like the original animation or you know, has this sort of cartoonish look to it or even a look reminiscent of Transformers Devastation, the video game. And I thought that was really cool. And I was tempted to buy both of them, but I was kind of tight on money at the time. These guys were not much more than they would have been retail. I think they're actually a little bit less, which is... Again, I have, just like Astro Train, I have another older sealed Transformer that I didn't pay a bunch of money for that I want to sort of open on camera. So I wanted to show this guy off while he's in box. Somebody else bought the Prime, but luckily I was able to pick up the Megatron. I didn't really need another Prime anyway because I have that exact same one already just in his normal color deco. And I'm really looking forward to checking this guy out and seeing if he will replace the Titans Return one on the shelf. I can already kind of tell you I feel like he will. But I wanted to do some really cool comparisons with the Titans Return version and talk about the pros and cons and if this is an improvement over that one and then why. So we'll go ahead and get into that. All right, so we've got to do things a little bit out of order here because the Titans Return Megatron is a triple changer, as you guys should be familiar with. I just did the Astro Train review, and that guy I got recently, you saw me take him out of the box, whereas the Megatron and Optimus Prime I've had since they came out. And I always thought that that was really ambitious, what they did with the Titans Return line, making all of the Voyagers triple changers while keeping their engineering uh, making sense. And they always had to find a spot for the Titan Master to go in sort of a cockpit seat in the vehicle modes. And so there always had to be this awkward cockpit piece. And so trying to find room for that and make it a triple changer is just really ambitious. And I remember thinking with this guy that... His engineering was just really convoluted, and I really didn't like the way that the modes fit together and everything. And uh, actually looking at it now, I kind of have changed my mind a little bit. So I historically never really had this guy in his jet mode, and I said I always liked the tank mode better. And I do kind of see why I may have thought that way, but actually looking at it, I think I like the jet mode a little bit better, actually, than the tank mode, and you'll see why. And looking at the proportions of the jet, it just looks a lot more unique than a lot of, you know, the Starscream likes we were getting around this time and continue to got after this guy was released. But he definitely looks like he was meant to be Blitzwing, and so maybe the Blitzwing version is a little bit better, and some of the issues that I have with this guy would not be as noticeable if I had waited and gotten the Blitzwing version, but I'm still going to try to hold out to get the Legacy Leader Class Blitzwing and uh, not get the version of this mold as Blitzwing, but the gen actually looks really good. I really don't like the way the arms fold away back here. I feel like if we could get rid of that altogether, it would look a lot better, but from the top, it looks actually really fantastic. The metallic stickers right here look really good and all the color distribution looks really good the nose cone looks good with a little decepticon sticker there in the cockpit it's all really really nice even the chest piece from the robot mode fits nice and compact here on top and doesn't stick out or look weird or break up the uh, color distribution or the silhouette of it at all it actually looks really good it obviously has a massive undercarriage which is pretty infamous for most blitzwing toys and the one major downside with this mode is that the sort of cockpit thing is the same as it is in the tank mode. It's the tank turret, and it just doesn't make any sense for the Titan Master to sit under there, especially because he would be upside down in the jet mode. So I just don't even bother to put him in there. But uh, it is a, it's a little bit clunky, but I don't mind it too much. I think the thing that I dislike about it the most 
is the transformation process having to fold the arms around each other and the arms are already awkward as it is and then you have the weird pins that connect into the knee where when you disconnect the knee from the pin you can sort of rotate the whole arm or the whole leg joint up like that and stow it away that's something that kind of became a very standard thing around this time but I worry about the structural integrity of the knees by doing that and then the way the wings snap into place they just make this very loud, very forceful snap, and it just makes me really worried about them. Like, if I can try to articulate them here. And I'm just worried about the stickers coming off, and each section of the wing is supposed to move and store away in tank mode. And I just I just really worry about the the uh, engineering of it and stuff breaking over time. But overall, it actually looks pretty good. I, I like this mode a lot better than I remember liking it. But let's go ahead and do the tank mode, and I'll finally be able to compare this Voyager, the Titan's Return one, to the Siege 35th Anniversary one because he only has a tank mode, so we'll finally be able to compare these two. All right, now that we have both Megatrons in tank mode, we can actually start doing a real comparison here, which is where, unfortunately, a lot of the problems really start. And I do also have the Leader Class Combiner Wars Megatron, but that is not the one in the G1 color deco with the G1 head sculpt. It's the one with the Armada head sculpt, which will be its own separate video. But the tank mode on that toy, would maybe this is a little unfair because it's neither a Voyager nor a triple changer. It's a leader class. But the tank mode on that thing is exquisite. Whereas on these two, I was expecting to like the tank mode on the newer Siege one quite a bit more than the Titans Return one, but in actuality, they both have problems, and I'm not really sure I really like either of them that much. I think this one does have some advantages, but both of them have a lot of problems. So the biggest problem I have with the Titans Return one is that things don't really seem to fit in together very well. I'm not sure if you guys have had this same problem, but the section right here where this hinge is where the turret is meant to move back and forth in all the different transformations. I guess it's supposed to clip in here to what is the back of his legs right here and become completely flush when it's down like that. But you can see there's this gap here and it just does not want to peg into anything. And then the same thing with these panels right here, which when you flip them open, it's how you do the leg transformation. And uh, they just do not want to stay closed for the life of me. Uh, this one right here seems like it's fine. This one does not want to stay closed at all, and it's really frustrating. And then the other thing I don't like about this tank mode is, of course, the little cockpit thing is very silly. And the wings, the way they're folded away, it just, it just makes me very concerned. They look like wings. They don't look very subtle at all. They're not well hidden. It doesn't complement the, the look of the rest of the tank at all. And I just worry about these these hinges like they just the way they just snap like that. I just something about it just I don't like. And so I think from now on, I may actually be leaving this guy in the jet mode. Of course, he's probably going to not be prominently displayed in the collection now that I have this one. But that's mar mostly because of their robot mode. But one thing I do like about the tank is from the sides, the treads look fantastic. The armor looks fantastic. Nice little Decepticon logo right there. So this section right here, which becomes the arms in robot mode, looks great. And the tank turret itself rotates incredibly well. It has a really nice range of motion to it. And the robot mode cannon does complement it very well. So it does have some cool things going for it. And then also it is pretty easy to pivot from the jet mode to the tank mode, which I thought was really surprising. I mentioned in the Astro Train video that that one does not easily pivot from the train mode to the sh shuttle mode. It's much easier to go from robot mode to either one, but not go from one vehicle mode to the other vehicle mode. With the Megatron, you kind of have to do funky stuff with his legs to get them to collapse to go into either alt mode. So the alt modes pivot better into each other than they do into the robot mode, which requires the most amount of commitment and resetting things. On to the, the Siege one. Now, again, this one does have a couple of cool things going for it. It's a much different style of tank. I do like the four separate uh, tread sections right here. Uh, certain Warpath toys have that and it reminds me a little bit of like the scorpion tank from halo which is pretty cool and the color scheme with the added paint for the sort of comic book style version they did for the 35th anniversary is pretty cool but 
the front of the tank right here, this section and these sections are the best looking part of the whole thing. The whole turret just looks messy and cluttered and I really can't make heads or tails of it. The cannon looks really cool because they've done a thing where they made the actual tank cannon barrel a different barrel than the Megatron uh, fusion cannon arm, which is really interesting. The two kind of peg into each other and that weird sword thing that he has in robot mode splits in half and gets kind of lightly tucked in under the turret and you can kind of see it sticking out from back here and it does make the tank cannon look a lot cooler and a lot more menacing and doesn't have any awkwardness in robot mode the the cannon on the titan's return one looks good in the tank mode but looks really bad in the robot mode and they circumvented that problem here by having it be a separate piece so the fusion cannon can look you know perfectly fine in the robot mode and not be affected by the engineering of the tank mode and plus the way they fit into each other just makes it look like this enormous super cannon type of thing but what i don't like about this tank mode like i said the turret just looks messy and cluttered and the details are very hard to make out and then it really just be looking like his legs back here <laughs> like unfortunately it just looks like his legs these just look like his feet back here and angling them up like this. I'm not sure if that makes it better or worse, but it doesn't really hide away his legs at all. It just, just looks like his legs. It's like Armada Megatron almost. And then the way the turret rotates on this one, I just it it grinds a lot on different parts of it and it really makes me worry about paint scratching. I really just don't like that at all. So um, yeah, it, it's it definitely has some problems and the... Uh, the barrel likes to come undone from where it's connected in there. And of course you have the piece underneath with the sword sliding around, which I don't like too much, but um, yeah, not that big of a fan of this. It has, it looks good from the front, but basically it does not look good from any other angle. And so that kind of leaves the robot mode as the potential stand out here. Okay. So as we get the two Megatrons into robot mode, I just wanted to show off something on the Titans return here one that I think is honestly pretty cool so right now the arm section is exactly how it is in tank mode it's those nice appealing tank treads and armor like I showed off before and how this works is there's a hinge here and a hinge here it's this weird double hinge thing and it pegs into the shoulder right there and folds down and then this piece folds nicely out of the way this rotates, this piece of tread folds back, and then you have the fully formed arm with elbow and everything there. No wrist swivel, unfortunately. So he's fully in his robot mode. Where the heck is his Titan Master? And of course, there is Megatron's little Titan Master. We can get him into focus. He does have somewhat of a G1 Megatron-esque helmet, sort of. It's, it's, it's there. And of course, we just kind of fold him over and reveal the Megatron faceplate, which is pretty nicely molded. And we just kind of insert that into the top here. And much like Astro Train and Prime, he does have the weird little fin things that pop up on the side there. And you can initiate those with a button somewhere on his torso. Actually, I think if you pull down the chest piece, there's a lever right here that flips them up. Makes it a little bit difficult to close his torso back after you do that but i don't really like those on either of those two guys i mainly just like them on prime because it gives him sort of that that g2 prime or rid scourge kind of look to him and then lastly we take the fusion cannon and plug it in on the side here which i don't think that looks all that good but there is of course the titan's return one in the robot mode and then over here we have of course the the siege 35th anniversary one in his robot mode and he also comes with the ridiculous sword thing which encloses in on the tank mode cannon we can just put that in his hand here so in terms of the robot mode i obviously i think i like this one quite a bit more this one like I, like i said before this one does have some cool things going for it but i really just don't like some of the proportions the legs from the knees up are really thin and lanky and I don't like the way the knees work, even though they're they're like kind of double jointed. And as much as I think the transformation of the arms is cool, I just hate the way these shoulders look. His shoulders always look like weirdly bowed out to the side. I don't like the look of that at all. 
the the stickers are nice and these are a nice you know comics-esque detail because he megatron has those weird little swirlies on his chest in the comics but the stickers always make me nervous they're gonna rub off um his articulation is fine it's comparable for any kind of voyager of that era the newer one just feels a lot more sturdy now one thing i was worried about and why i didn't buy this guy when he was new when i bought the optimus prime was i didn't like how it looks like his shoulders are really high up on him and his neck looks kind of sunken in and he has this big backpack back here and it just made it look like his head was way too low and he was just really stocky and it just made him look kind of cheap and not proportionate with his normal g1 self that you would associate him with and while the titans return one does kind of get around that a little bit when i actually handle this guy in person he does actually look quite a bit better and just that head sculpt just looks so incredible it is such a nice uh, G1 Megatron head sculpt, and the helmet is just so detailed and smooth, and it's on a ball joint, and of course that can potentially pop up and give you a little bit more range of motion if you need to you know, look up whatever for a pose. Of course, it creates a big gap there. The fact that he has a sword as a weapon is cool, and their articulation is pretty much the same. Neither of them have wrist swivels. I do like the way the shoulders look on this one quite a bit more. This one has a waist swivel whereas the other one does not and he also has ankle pivots so this one is superior in terms of posability already but the only thing i don't like about his articulation is it feels like the ankles are a little bit loose and they're not loose in the like left to right motion they're loose in the front to back rotation but luckily there's another hinge there on the heel to prevent his feet from actually just collapsing and falling over but yeah, I think this guy is really, really cool in robot mode. It's probably going to be my dedicated G1 style Megatron in my collection from now on. The fact that he has a sword is a little bit strange, but I suppose in you know War for Cybertron, he had a sword that he would use to fight you know Prime with Prime's axe and that kind of thing. And I guess long are the days of the ball and chain Morningstar style weapon. But yeah, both these guys are pretty cool. I think obviously if you have to have one, go for the Siege one. Uh, the 35th anniversary one don't go for the titans return one unless you really want that triple changer aspect of it i think a lot of people i saw a lot more people pick up the blitzwing version of this guy for their collections and i've i've already kind of talked about that at length in this video and uh while I, there are some cool things about this megatron i think that honestly at this point the jet mode might be my favorite mode and i think that the robot mode this Megatron just looks better and is he's very sturdy. He feels very sturdy and bulky. All his joints are nice and tight, which is really good. Definitely a huge step up from Titans Return in that regard because while the Titans Return figures, even some of the deluxes, they were all really, really ambitious. But there are some major opportunities when it comes to the, the tightness of the joints. And we will definitely see that when we get to the Optimus Prime because his uh waist has to like clip in at the front it like goes back and forth a little bit and it has to clip in at the front otherwise he will just fall over like that and i'll show that off in that video but that one has so many cool gimmicks that i can kind of give it a pass and it has kind of a spot alongside the siege prime that kind of matches this megatron obviously the prime and the megatron these two that go together are going to be prominently displayed on my shelf but i think i'd be more likely to get the titans return prime out of storage to you know play around with over this megatron just because he has some cool gimmicks and he has that sort of g2 look to him he's got like a clear translucent like energon sword and like a double barrel blaster which is really cool this megatron the titans return one also did come with a gun it's in storage and it's not terribly impressive anyway but i do like when you give them multiple weapons as i said in the astro train video and uh, I think Astro Train is going to stay prominently in the collection as well because I have no plans on getting the Siege Leader Class version of him. But I would like to get the Legacy Galaxy Shuttle version of that mold if I can find it. Um, I did just pick up the Deluxe Hotshot today. He's just out, just barely out of frame there. And so we may be talking about him soon. I, I went ahead and opened him. I didn't leave him in the packaging or anything like that. But we do have a couple more uh, inbox Transformers to talk about. Uh, one actually from the exact same line as this guy, and it's the uh, it's the 35th anniversary Siege uh, Sound Blaster 
which is a just a reprint of, repaint of Soundwave, and I think that they will complement each other quite well when I get him out of the box. So looking forward to doing that. Um, I guess one more final thing on this guy. He does have the big obnoxious backpack, which a lot of people hate backpacks on Transformers. They hate kibble and stuff like that. But I actually think this looks fine and doesn't really get in the way. And it kind of complements the look of him for the most part. So I think that the proportionality on this Voyager is not bad in spite of my initial criticism. And I think it was honestly just bad photography from the standpoint of the people that did the promotional images of the toy on Hasbro's side. The pictures were just not flattering at all. And it made me really turned off from this guy. And maybe it was the difference in the color deco from the original uh, color scheme of this guy that he came in and this special variant color scheme because a lot of the things that I'm saying about this guy only really count for this version of him and I'm not sure how easy it is to find this variant version with the comic book style color deco either uh, I really just got lucky when I found him but one thing about that is that it it makes me incredibly nervous <laughs> so this guy is basically covered in additional paint that the vanilla version would not be and you can feel it. You can feel the dull, sort of, the dull, dry texture of the painted areas as opposed to, like, the soft, smooth feeling of the of the raw plastic areas, like on other figures. And where you can feel that, it just, it just makes me nervous. I'm just so worried about it scratching or coming off. I think as I was taking him out of the box, I was using little clippers to snap all the rubber bands on him. And I think I clipped into his hand this hand and scratch the paint on that just ever so slightly there not enough to where it's a deal breaker but it just makes me nervous for the rest of this guy and that's why things like the turret rotating in the tank mode and then it feeling like it grinds against itself just I, ugh, it gives me the heebie-jeebies but the way he is right now and if he's proudly displayed in robot mode next to the optimus prime up there i think he's going to be fine so if you get your hands on this guy i definitely highly recommend him and if you're curious about the titans return one because he's a triple changer he definitely is a lot of fun he's just a little bit more fragile and has some flaws throughout so anyway i think that's gonna do it for this video so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time